Wow. I think I better pray. <laughs> oh, Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for all that you have given to us in this creation that you've given us to enjoy and to be blessed by. Thank you that you gave us your son more than anything, though. And Lord, as we look at your word today, I pray that you would help us to understand that uh, we need to stay true to your word and that we do not be deceived by Satan. And so we honor you and glorify you today, and we ask this in your precious and holy name. Amen. All right, let's try again. So 2 Corinthians 2.11 says, so that we would not be outwitted by Satan, for we are not ignorant of his designs. How many of you know the designs of Satan? What he tries to do in your life? No? Turns, tries to turn us away from God. Yeah, that's the big all general and all inclusive thing. That's what he tries to do is turn us away from God. But there are specific things that Satan does in order to do that or to accomplish that in our lives. And that's what I want to look at uh, today. But before I do that, I want to look at the positive here. And let's go to 2 Corinthians 10.5. Actually, I'll start verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. So... Not only are we walking in a world where we have physical problems and stuff, there's spiritual problems out there that we have to fight, that we regularly have to be concerned about and make sure that we're doing it. Otherwise, why would Paul in Ephesians give us this, the armor of God and list off those things that we are supposed to be particularly concerned with? Uh, so part of Satan's deception is very much confusion and misunderstanding of scripture and different things that uh, we try to speak about on behalf of God. Why do you think God gave us the helmet of salvation to protect our heads? That our minds might not be deceived and that we might not be turned from the way of God. So we need to be very careful in the things that we do and the things that we listen to and the things that we uh, I guess watch even with the, the book of um, the lost symbol, different things like that. There's, I've been amazed how many things are coming up in shows that are, are on TV now that are so dark and negative. Uh, they're all about, uh, I don't know, ghosts and, and, and what's the word? Um, not skeletons, but dark things, you know, like there's monsters out there that are going to get you and, and beware of this house because there's all these spirits that are in there that are trying to get you and stuff. And, and there's all these things that are coming out that are so dark now and so negative that we need to be careful that we don't get caught up in them as if they are reality. We must make sure that we know that there is the truth of God's word that gives us strength to be able to understand that yes, there is Satan and yes, there are things that he tries to do to us but that we have the ability and the power to be able to confront and defeat Satan. He's not all-powerful, folks. He knows that he's already lost the war. But we need to be convinced in our minds and in our hearts that we know that we have won the war rather than knuckling under to the philosophies and the things that go on in this world. One of the things that it says in uh, just, um, it's 2 Timothy 3.5. You remember that it says there to Timothy in the end times what it's going to be like in this world and what's going to be happening. And it says that 
by the end they will have a form of godliness but they will deny the power a form of godliness but they will deny the power and we get and, and as I watch the church and as I watch the things that go on we seem to try to do right things but yet we do not have the reality of the power of Christ in our lives so many times that we just kind of fall by the wayside I don't know I wonder sometimes if that's why we have uh, man I can't even think of my words today uh, apathy why we have so much apathy is it is it it's not just because of Satan it is because of Satan too he does that to be able to let the church filter down and become less powerful and strengthening but it's it's because we let him we let him I want you to know today above everything else that you have the ability and that you are to defeat Satan in your life every day and that it's not just an impractical thing but that every day you have the power and the ability to defeat Satan whether that be in our temperaments or however it may be also in Timothy chapter 4 2nd Timothy it says for the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching but have itching ears that they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions teachers to suit their own passions well I like this my pastor doesn't seem to do that I think I better look for somebody who will be able to tell me what I'm doing is right and is good my ear is itching because I don't want to hear what the pastor's saying, but I want to hear what I think I'm saying, what I think is right. And we all have those things where we try to rationalize our ways, and that's one of Satan's deceptions, folks. Rationalize. We rationalize away things so that they're not as bad as they're supposed to be. And it really doesn't mean that I'm losing my faith in God and it really doesn't mean that I'm a bad person and so we rationalize all of those things away to make ourselves feel better to feel better we do it a lot of times in the things that we're supposed to do no no I don't think that sounds right that's too difficult for me so I think I'll just lessen my goal for myself and make it less than that so that I don't have to try and accomplish all of that in Colossians chapter 2 verse 8 there's a few verses in Colossians that are actually uh, important here see to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit according to human tradition according to the elemental spirits of the world and not according to Christ we all want our kids to have what we call higher education I guess college university degrees all of those things but over the years those things have been getting worse and worse and the philosophies and the things that they teach at the colleges are not God's word they're not what we should be believing as Christians when I went to Bible school I noticed um, well actually I, I ran out of I did i um, my third year of, of Bible school was to be my last year and for some reason or other the college decided that they would do a fourth year and that I could be the guinea pig so I was the guinea pig to be able to go for a bachelor's degree in our Bible school and in order to do that I had to go to the college in Medicine Hat and take things like ethics philosophy all of those kind of courses and stuff that I would take at the college and I went over there and I got into the the course and I I was shocked 
Even back then, I was amazed at the things that people believed. I, I couldn't believe that they thought life was just a joke. That was their philosophy of life. So let's go out there and have a good time. It's just a joke. It's nothing big, real, anything. And I don't know how I even got through that year trying to make sure I stayed true to what I believed and not get pulled astray by the things that they taught. Um, even in ethics and courses of if there's five people in the boat, the boat's starting to sink, who do you throw overboard? You know, all of those questions that have no real good answers, can't tell you which one should be, you know. And, and they create hypothetical situations to try to make you believe what they want you to believe rather than sticking to the truth of God's word and saying this is the way God sees things and we all get pulled aside into those philosophies and those and then pretty soon those philosophies work their way into our lives so that we start to make decisions based on them rather than based on what would God want me to do and what would God want me to do he would want me to stay true to the word verse 14 no 18 sorry let no one disqualify you insisting on asceticism and worship of angels going in on in detail about visions puffed up without reason by his serious mind I have noticed that the world is starting to make other things more important than Christ. You can pray to the saints, you can pray to, the, to Mother Mary, you can pray to whatever, you don't have to pray to Jesus, you don't have to do all of that. And Jesus begins to lose his significance and his importance in this world. And how they get caught up on angels Oh, I had a wonderful angel come to me. And, and it gets tied into so much of the, the old cult and the things that, that God is not in a, and of, of out there, but that Satan is using to deceive us. Uh, we think sometimes, oh, I'll just go get my palm read or I'll read my horoscope or I'll, whatever I'm going to do. But those are deceptions of Satan trying to get us to believe things that do not allow God to take control in our life. Oh, I see today I'm supposed to run into a lot of money, my horoscope said. Or I don't know how many times I've had a fortune cookie and it's told me that, oh, something wonderful is going to happen to you today. Nah, nothing happened. Nothing happened. But even Hebrews, the author of Hebrews, knew that people were going to get deceived into believing in angels and lifting them up and everything. And he took a whole chapter of the book of Hebrews to say, Jesus is greater than the angels. Don't start worshiping angels and making them more significant and important than what they really are. Deception is out there in so many, many different ways that we don't really realize. Verse 23 of chapter 2 of Colossians says, These have indeed an appearance of wisdom in promoting self-made religion and asceticism and severity to the body, but they are of no value in stopping the indulgence of the flesh. The indulgence of the flesh is our human desires and the things that we want, we want to accomplish, that we get carried away. And we look at ways to which, how do I stop that, God? How do I, how do I be able to get to the place where I've, I've been set free from that, I've been cleansed from that? And so the self-made religions come up. Well, if I do this and I do this and I do this, then that'll take me away from what I want to do. But it doesn't work. It doesn't work. 
the only power that's really available to be able to help us overcome the lust of the flesh and the pride of the eyes and all of those different things. The power of God's the only thing that can do that in Christ Jesus. He's the only one that has the ability to keep us going. 2 Corinthians 11:14 says Satan will appear as an angel of light to try to deceive us. Paul talks confidently in scripture that there are many that will come as false prophets amongst you. And they will try to lead you astray and confuse you. That's why you are so important in this body of this church. You all are significant in the way that you are to be alert to deception and to deceiving so that we might together keep ourselves strong. We have, a, we have the responsibility to help one another, don't we? Even in the one that we don't really want to do. Know what that is? When one of us sins and we don't want to go talk to the person who sinned. I don't want to tell you you did what was wrong. I'm not going to be able to be a friend with you anymore. That's Satan deceiving us too. Keeping us from the things that we need to be doing and being honest with people. You can keep each other from deception. You are responsible in this body of, of believers that you will be able to see maybe what that person can't see themselves. Did you ever notice that you're always the last one to know when you're doing something that's wrong? Everybody else sees it, but nobody's going to tell me. Nobody's going to come and talk to me about it. We are responsible to keep deception out of this body. It's not just the responsibility of a pastor. It is his responsibility. But it's your responsibility as well. We are all just human and we all can fall under deception. We all can fall under deception. One of the, I guess the simplest one, maybe, I don't know if that's the word I should call it, but the simplest one is Ephesians 4.26. Twenty-five says, therefore, having put away falsehood or deception, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor. That's our responsibility that I talked about. For we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. But twenty-seven is what's important. And give no opportunity to the devil. Anger is something that Satan can use. It can be used to be able to destroy us, to tear us apart in the body of Christ. It can be all kinds of uses like that that Satan can take. And that's why Paul says, get over it real quick. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. It's something that needs to be settled. Otherwise, Satan will create out of that anger bitterness, lack of fellowship, all kinds of things that will be created that begin to seep deep into our hearts and stop us from being able to be what we're supposed to be because we can't get past that anger that we've allowed to stay. How do we get over it? How do we get past those things? In Ephesians, the, Paul talks about the purpose of the church. And I'm not going to read, it's chapter 4, I'm not going to read from verse 11, 
But I'm going to start at verse 14. All the things that he gives to the church in pastors, evangelists, all of those things, the working of the church, the building up of Christ. In verse 14 he says, So that we may no longer be children. Tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes, rather speaking the truth in love. Speaking the truth in love. You ever felt like when you're with some adults and things are going, you want to say, children, stop it. You ever wanted to call adults children? I have. Oh, come on. Sometimes you want to tell me, child, grow up, right? I know it. I know you think about it. How come you don't tell me it? Sometimes we want children adult children to just grow up why are you so into all of these different things that come around why do you so easily lay aside what God says in his word and you're pulled astray by things it says tossed to and fro by the waves from every wind of direction Satan's got so many deceptions out there there's no way we're gonna be able to discover them all but we need to be alert to know what's going on out there so that we keep ourselves true to the Word of God deception is not an easy thing sometimes to be able to discover let me read for you just a little bit out of this book to let you know how things go This is one of the guys talking and he says, and if you have any doubts, Corinthians overtly tell us that the parables have two layers of meaning. Milk for babes and meat for men. Remember that passage where it says, get over being to babes and drinking of the milk. It's time you moved on to the meat of the word. Remember that? And here he says, the milk is watered down reading for infantile minds and the meat is the true message, accessible only to mature minds yes only to mature minds but consider if the Bible does not contain hidden meaning then why have so many of history's famous finest minds become so obsessed with studying it Sir Isaac Newton wrote more than a million words attempting to decipher the true meaning of the scripture including in 1704 manuscript that claimed he had extracted hidden scientific information on the Bible in the Bible I don't know where they look for all of these mysteries scripture is very plain in what it says isn't it what does it say about salvation? It's pretty plain, right? There is no name under heaven whereby you might be saved except Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. All of it is very simple. If you repent and believe you shall be saved very simple it's not so hard and yet people try to find hard ways to be able to get in there this is just too simple there's got to be something else it's too easy to do so I'm asking you today that you would activate your heart and your mind together our mind probably isn't good enough by itself but we need our heart together with it so that the Spirit of God is also working within us to keep us from being deceived by what it is that Satan tries to place in our lives. 
that's a task that we all need to do and it's a challenge for us and I want you to know that it's a road that's hard walked sometimes because his deception is so very very what's the words uh, slight very little at a time that he does it so that you get drawn into more and more and it's just the little things that he tries to change and sometimes we don't even notice the little things that Satan is changing to draw us away from God that's how all the cults begin First of all, they look for people who are, oh, let's see, discouraged, downhearted, had a lot of difficulties and troubles. I have an answer for you. And they start talking about Jesus, but it's not the Jesus that you want to hear about, but they talk about Jesus and they begin to pull you in. And once you're pulled in, then you begin to be, what's the word, tightened up so that their restrictions become more and more and more and you don't even understand what's happening to you but you get pulled astray folks today I want you not to be deceived that's what I want I want us all not to be deceived that we would stay true to the word of God in everything that we do and please don't let yourself uh, rationalize away the things that we do, we all do, that you do, that keep you from being able to settle things in your heart and your mind. Ah, that's just a little thing. We'll let it go. It doesn't matter. They'll get over it or I'll get over it. And 20 years down the road, I still got it. And it's not getting any better. Be true to the word of God. Don't let Satan deceive you. And the other challenge that I have for you. Tell each other. I know it's hard. I know it's difficult. And yes, we may lose some friends. And yes, some difficult things may come out of it. But if we are true to what God wants of us as brothers and sisters in the Lord, we do have a responsibility to be able to say, are you sure what you're doing is right? Are you sure what you have in your heart right now is right? It's what God would desire of us. I'm sure he would that we might be able to encourage and build up one another. Let's pray. Father, I admit I don't know all of Satan's deceptions. But I do know that he's not just sitting out there waiting I do know that he's very active in trying to destroy our lives in trying to tear us away from the Father <clears throat> in trying to get us deceived so that we would follow false teachings but Lord I know one thing above everything else that with Jesus Christ you can keep us pure you can keep us loyal and faithful to your word I ask, Father, that your Holy Spirit would continue to aggressively challenge us. Aggressively let us know when we're going the wrong direction or doing the wrong things. God, may you reveal your power to us. Even though we know as time draws near to your return, things are going to get worse and worse. That doesn't mean 
that we have to fall away. It doesn't mean we have to give up. It doesn't mean that that it's not important. It's more important every day as we wait for you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the truth of your word. Thank you that it never changes. Thank you that you, Jesus, never change. Yesterday, today, forever, Jesus is the same. Father, may you bless, encourage, and strengthen these people in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.